Okay, we're going to look now at broadening our definition of trig ratios for angles in standard position. Moving from one that involves definitions of the ratios in terms of points on a unit circle to one that allows us to use the coordinates of any given point to determine trig ratios and the angle for that matter. All right, so let's have a look at that right now. So this is definitely not a unit circle. It's got a radius of 10 here. All right, it does follow the Pythagorean relation. Its equation is x squared plus y squared equals 100, but it's not a unit circle because it doesn't have a radius of one. And because it's not a unit circle, the coordinates of this point where the terminal arm meets that circle aren't equal to the cosine and sine, all right? They're equal to 10 times as much as the cosine and sine just because that radius is 10, but we'll leave that alone for now. What we want to do is define the ratios in terms of any point anywhere here so any point on that and if we were to change this radius around and stuff like that I'm gonna leave it at 10 so it's easy to work with but we almost want to look at it and think that that circle is not there and just define our trig ratios based on the coordinates of a point somewhere so let's leave it there for now and see what we can see here that x value is negative 8 the y value is 6 and then this radius is 10 here that sign is 0.6 that comes from this which is 6 divided by our radius with it which is 10 within our little reference triangle here that makes sense right you know if that was a triangle all by itself that was those three dimensions 6 divided by 10 opposite divided by hypotenuse in this case it's y divided by the radius all right the sine defined in general is the y coordinate divided by the radius the cosine, negative 0.8, is defined as x divided by the radius. And then the tangent is no different than before. It's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Again, within the triangle, thinking opposite over adjacent. And then the three reciprocal ratios are just the reciprocals of these values. The cosecants, the reciprocal of the sine, sine was y divided by that radius, 6 divided by 10. So the cosecant is radius divided by y, 10 divided by 6. Similarly for these two things here, cosine was x divided by the radius, so secant is radius divided by x. And lastly here, tangent was y over x, so cotangent's x over y. All right, that works for any point anywhere, no matter how big this circle is or whether there's a circle there or not. All right, let's write some of that down now. All right, so in general, if we're looking at those six trig ratios for this, now this situation, I don't even have a circle here because it doesn't matter as long as you have a point on the terminal arm of the angle, right? Here's the initial arm. Here's the terminal arm. So as long as you have that, then you can write the ratios. All right, the sign, as we said, was going to be, if you're, if you're kind of thinking of looking at the angle from this reference angle, that kind of the opposite over the hypotenuse, or in other words, the y divided by the radius. Cosine is x over the radius. Tangent is y over x. Again, you can just use the your standard right angle trigonometry as long as you're looking in this reference triangle here. And then the cosecant is just the reciprocal of this. Since this one's y over r, that one's r over y. This one is r over x for the same reason. And then this one's x over y. All right, so those are general circular definition of trig functions. You can use any point to write the trig ratios for that angle. All right, so let's look at doing something with that right now. So here we have a situation where we want to write the ratios and find the angles while we're at it here. For an angle that is defined not as being given the angle, we don't know the angle, but an angle that's defined as all we know about it is a point that it passes through. So if we know it passes through that point, 7, negative 4, and then we'll draw a line here. That's our terminal arm. So our angle goes all the way around for that. If we were going to draw the initial arm, it's this. Right? But we're going to kind of superimpose a reference triangle over that and then use the coordinates of that point. All right? We have this. We have this, and then we have this. So it's not a special triangle, but it's a triangle that's going to work in this situation here because 
we have this side is 7, this side is negative 4, we can write a couple of the ratios right now just using those two numbers. If you know the coordinates of the point, you can write the tangent and the cotangent without even doing much else, right? Because tangent is just going to be negative 4 over 7, and cotangent is going to be 7 over negative 4. If we want to write the other 4, we need to find that radius. The radius you can find of course using a Pythagorean relationship and the other two sides square root of 7 squared plus 4 squared right ignore the negative because squaring it's gonna disappear anyways square root of 65 so let's write that on the triangle this is square root of 65 I'm not gonna write an approximate value for that it's better to leave it like this because we're looking at writing exact values anyways so if we want to write the sine our sine is going to be our y coordinate, negative 4, over our radius, root 65. Of course, you could rationalize that if you really wanted to. You can make that negative 4 root 65 over 65. You can flip it over to get the cosecant, negative root 65 over 4. If you want the cosine, you want your x coordinate over your radius, which is going to give you 7 over root 65 or if you're rationalizing that one 7 root 65 over 65 and then the secant just the reciprocal of that root 65 over 7 so there's your so there's your six trig functions from that reference triangle and all you knew at the beginning was a was a point you can even find the angle from any one of those six ratios. Now, since you're gonna to have to use your calculator, it's not a special triangle or anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to pick one of these ones, and probably the best one to pick is tangent because it's the easiest numbers, plus it's the given numbers. It's always best to use what you're given rather than something you've calculated. If we're gonna find that angle, we need to find that reference angle, this thing in here. We'll call that theta reference, and this is theta out here. To find theta reference, we're going to need our calculator. Make sure it's in radian mode, which it is. And we know that tangent of theta is negative 4 sevenths. We can find that reference angle by looking at what tangent inverse of 4 sevenths is. It's always best not to put the negative in when you're looking for the reference angle. Then you know what you get is going to be a positive angle less than 90 degrees or less than pi over 2. And then you can work with it in any one of the other quadrants. So 10 inverse of 4 sevenths. We'll go to our calculator and do that. 10 inverse of 4 sevenths. Which is that. Approximately 0.52 or 5191. We'll leave that there for a second while we think about how we're going to use it. How we're going to use it, if we want to find theta itself, it's all the way around minus that reference angle. So we want 2 pi minus theta r. And then we can write our approximate value down there. All right, so go back to that calculator. 2 pi minus, I'm just going to do this, so I don't have to re-enter it, 2 pi minus answer. 5.76. If I'm looking for two decimal places, 5.76. Alright, so that's writing those trig ratios and finding the angle as well, just given the coordinates of a point. Okay, we're going to do one other thing here. It's going to turn out to be very similar. It might look different to start with here, but this is where we're given one of the ratios and we're given a quadrant. We're not given coordinates of a point like the first example. But it is going to be very similar because we can use that to set up a triangle as well. The fact that the sine is 2 over 3, we know that this 2 over 3 here has got to be a y coordinate over the radius. So we can just draw a triangle and label it with those two things, right? It's in quadrant 2. I'm going to draw it so it's so I can kind of have a radius that's 3 and a y coordinate that's 2. All right, because that's what we're given. We know the sine is y over r. If we're going to write some of those other things here, the, the easiest ratio to write without doing anything else is this one. If you know that sine is 2 thirds, cosecant is 3 halves. But again, to find the other ones, we need to find that missing side. The missing side here, again, you can use Pythagoras. It's going to be square root of 
3 squared minus 2 squared, because you're finding the smaller side, square root of 5. This is square root of 5. Again, that's, you know, it's a decimal number. Well, let's leave it like that, because we want to write some exact values. If you want to write these things, make sure the first thing here is realizing that that's negative, because it's to the left. And then you can go about just writing the ratios one at a time here. This cosine is going to be the x, negative root 5 over 3. So secant is going to be negative 3 over root 5. You could, again, rationalize that if you want. You could make it negative 3 root 5 over 5. You're writing the other ones here. The tangent is going to be y over r. Put a negative somewhere. Again, you could rationalize that one if you want. You could make it negative 2 root 5 over 5. Cotangent is going to be flipping that one over, negative root 5 over 2. Better to flip the one that's not rationalized because then you're already getting rid of that radical that way. And then we're going to find the angle itself here. Finding the angle itself, so we want to find this angle. We're again needing to find theta reference there. To find theta reference, again, I would use the given information. I would use this sine ratio that's written right up there. So I would say sine inverse of two-thirds to find my reference angle. Go to your calculator because it's not one of those special angles. Sine inverse 2 divided by 3 gives you that. All right. So that angle now to, to get theta itself, we have to realize that we need to go halfway around minus that reference angle. So to find our theta itself, we're going to go pi minus theta reference. So that's something we're going to have to go back to our calculator for. And we need to take pi minus, we'll use that answer thing again, so we don't have to put it in. 2.41 roughly if we're going to two decimal places. Seems like it makes sense. That's in quadrant two, all right? So that's a look at general circular definition of trig functions using any point anywhere on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. Using that to write all six ratios and even finding the angle, all right? That's it.